One of my favorite tricks is model switching. And in ConfUI, of course, you can do some awesome stuff while building the workflow. To follow my workshop, you can download my workflow on OpenArt. You see here there's a download button and above that you have a green button that says launch workflow where you can actually run my workflow in the cloud for free. Let me show you what model switching is all about. So first of all, over here, we are starting with our model. In this case, I'm using Ref Animated, which is more digital painting style, but I want to have a photo at the end of the process. Also, because we are using Ref Animated, we have here Clip Skip, you can see, with minus two, while for a photo, you need minus one. Now, the thing here is, because we have two different Clip Skips we want to use here, we basically have to have also two inputs of the positive prompt, maybe even the negative prompt. In this case, we're just sticking to the positive prompt here. So how do we actually do that? Well, you can see over here, I have my clip text encode, but there is no text in here because I'm sending the text from a prompt text field that is only sending out text doing nothing else. How do I get the input here? Well, I'm using a normal clip text encode node and you can right click and in that list down here, you have convert text to input so that the text field, which is also called the widget is being removed and is replaced by a text input. So up here we can see the converted clip to text encode. Here we have the text input. And from our prompt text, this is then connected here to the input. And of course, I'm going to use the same one up here for the second clip text encode I want to use here. The rest of the process, as we can see here, is pretty much the same as always. We have here our negative prompt, which is the same for both images. No changes needed here. Ugly and deformed. We have here our empty latent 512 by 768. And then we have here our K sampler. The first one, we do a latent upscale. And then we have here our second K sampler. In this case, I'm using a low denoise of only 0 0.35. You want to experiment with the denoise value to see what gives you the best results. Of course, we need a second loader for the second model. So up here, we have our load checkpoint. And as you can see, if I stretch this out a little bit, I'm using Epic Realism Natural Sin, really good for photos, gives very good skin texture. Also, here we have our clip text encode that is using the same text for the prompt. You can also, of course, use a different text prompt if you want to, or if this is better for either the model or the image output, because sometimes, for example, different models require different kind of words in the prompt. For example, you might want to use here raw photo or professional photo or other terms that are photo related to get a better output. So as you can see here, we are sending the second model and of course our clip text encode that is now not using a clip skip of minus two into the positive prompt and the model input of our second K sampler. And up here, you can see the image. This has been rendered with Ref Animated. It's a beautiful a digital painting style of a woman standing in a park. Very nice. Now, Ref Animated is very good with poses, is very good with hands often, it's very good with colors. So I like a lot about this model. And because of that, I want to use the output of this model as the input for my photo creation. So I have the same composition and colors that are beautiful, but then I have a photographic style. So when we render through all of it, this is our output. And I would say that is pretty amazing. You can see it's a very similar dress, very similar colors. Everything is very similar, but now it is the style of a photo. So be creative with model switching and any kind of other creative process, because this is the power of ComfyUI to experiment and use it as your little laboratory for AI image generation. All right, I built another easy workflow for you. This time we're going to look into how to use masks in ComfyUI. 
that are hand painted in this case, it's pretty easy to do. So again, we have a simple text to image workflow here. Again, let's go here through the basic steps. We have the model loader, positive prompt, negative prompt, the VAE loader and the case sampler, of course. And then over here, the VAE decode that creates the image. Of course, if we want to create a mask for an image, we need to load that image. So down here, we have load image. You can see here, this is another image that I have created with AI. And to paint this mask, it's a little bit hidden, but it's very easy. Right click on that node. And then here it says open in mask editor. When you open that up, it gives you this kind of pop up window here. And with that, you can, for example, click here to clear the mask. You have here a slider for the size of your brush. And with that, you can simply paint, for example, over the face to make a mask for that face. Click on save to note so that now we have the image here with the mask in it. Now, of course, we need to send the mask to our case sampler. The way to do that is that first of all, we have here a VAE encode. And then let's zoom out here a little bit more. We need to have a set latent noise mask. This is one of the ways of doing that. There's different ways how you can apply a mask. So in this case, we convert the complete image into a latent image and then we combine it with the mask. It's coming out from here into set latent noise mask. And then both of that goes into our latent image. Now to be able to change the content of the image, you want to experiment down here with the denoise that you're using for creating the new image in your picture. Another important thing here is that you might want to reduce the prompt to what you actually want to inpaint, not the complete prompt, because that might be confusing for the AI to what you actually want to inpaint there, only what you actually want to have there. And then also maybe some style words on top of that, depending also on the denoise you're using. As you can see here, I have a preview. This is loading the original image and then I have here a safe image. This is showing us the changed image. So let's zoom in here a little bit closer. And as you can see here, we have a new face and also glasses that the woman is wearing. So that worked wonderfully for us. Of course, you can experiment more with different face expressions, all kinds of things. You can basically change any kind of thing in the image you want that can be very creative and also very helpful to get you the results you desire by inpainting the elements afterwards. It doesn't always all have to happen in one go. Thank you for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed this and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet and well, um, yeah.